The IPA Free Sports Champions Cup Pool is brought to you by Select Car Leasing. A very good evening to you ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Solly Hole once again for IPA Free Sports Champions Cup action. Tonight is finals night. We've had 20 weeks, five straight months of pulsating pool action. It all comes to a head tonight. Who will win this fabulous trophy? It's time to find out. Here we go then, ladies and gentlemen. The night we've all been waiting for since we started all the way back in February. Very good evening to you. Welcome to Solihull. We're back in Riley's to crown the IPA Free Sports Champions Cup winner. There is the trophy you saw it a moment ago as well. It is looking resplendent in this brand new arena that has been debuted on the TV for you tonight. This is the lineup, and needless to say, it should be a belter. Scott Gillespie takes on Liam Dunster in an all-Scottish semi-final. Our second semi contains Rona McCarthy and Jack Whelan. It is go time in Solly Hull. Our first semi-final, Scott Gillespie versus Liam Dunster in an all-Scottish affair. Really looking forward to this one. Two fabulous players. Two very different players as well. They are some of the very finest around you have to be to make it to this level of competition. We have seen some incredible players fall by the wayside during the course of this tournament. Only four remain standing. We both qualified. Late on in the tournament, we had 16 weeks touring around the country. Four players each week, only one left standing. Our last 16 has been hugely entertaining over the last month or so. These two have both had very tough routes to this stage. Scott Gillespie in our first round of 16 took out Simon Ward and Mark Farnsworth in one night to advance through to this stage. First frame, race to six, Scott Gillespie to break. Liam Dunster had to knock out Mark Boyle in the very first night of the competition for him. Scott Gillespie then with the break. And he does make a ball. He'll be relieved about that. He's at the table, which is the first priority. Easiest lie for him though. Three balls to the right of the table as we look at it will cause him a problem. Extension called. He's called his extension if you've not been following the Champions Cup. Each player is on the shot clock. They get 45 seconds a shot, one extension of 30 seconds per frame. It's a regular tactic to use this at the start of the frame when players are figuring out their routes around the table. And you can see why this is causing Scott a fair bit of grief. Looks like he's choosing reds. most attacking players on the tour. If he has the chance to go for it, he will. Look to immediately get into his problem area there. It's not 
come out too kindly for him. Just a safety, which we've watched Scott Gillespie before. We'll know how much he does not like to play those. And rest assured, being a Scott, that's very much iron brew in his glass. So Liam at the table. players better than Liam around at the moment still very young hugely respected in the game as well oh, we went for the plan didn't quite get it it was close He's got a good white, though. <coughs> Element of the shot to nothing to that. He still would have had a next pot, and he's not left Scott a huge amount here. There's a little part of Scott which would be pleased. There's two reds on the right cushion, and now three. Is he going to take on this tricky one? He is gets it as well. Now, potential opening hit for Scott Gillespie. That was a tough shot. Played it really well. Scott script. It's a thin, thin cut, and you can see there how much side he's had to play it with to try and hold the white. and methodical. Speaking to players on the circuit, the one constant praise they have for Liam Dunster is he never seems to play the wrong shot. Openings there for him. And he's got an angle to head up the table here to take out his final yellow. this final yellow in the middle of the table just so he can hold for the black 
Cued it like that, he's played it well. Played that really well. Just dollies the yellow in. And so the first frame of the semi final of the Knights. Looks like it's going the way of Liam Dunster. And it does. Great start for the Scotsman and for his fellow countrymen. And I mentioned earlier on in the frame that he has been in such wonderful form and you can see that with his performances as well. He had a great game against Neil Rayburn in the World Championships. Another player who has been in wonderful form this year. That 16 maybe didn't do Liam particularly justice. He was playing very well. Lost to Neil again in the Welsh Professional, but then it's semi finals, finals, quarter finals. He's had a good run, obviously, in this tournament, too. One of the very best players around at the moment. break and a chance to consolidate the advantage that he's gained after the first frame. I mentioned he's meticulous and methodical. Even with the break. Wants every single ball to be touching. And, uh, and joined in the commentary booth after Hefty administration duties by the president of the IPA. Kev Barton, Kev, lovely to have you with us. Uh, wonderful to have you once again on the commentary duty here. First of all, how excited are you that we've finally got to the big one? It's finals night, five months later, and we're here. Well, those five months have uh, <laughs> flown by pretty, uh, pretty quickly, and... Uh, yeah, it's great to, great that we're here in the final, the brand new arena with four great players and uh, I think we're in for an absolutely cracking night's entertainment and uh, absolutely impossible to pick a winner at these four great players. But uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a blast. It's, um, it's been challenging, we've done a lot of mileage and um, We've covered, covered just about everywhere in the UK, on mainland UK. But um, yeah, it's been a great success. And um, despite uh, the challenges of uh, you know getting the arena and the, uh, the table <laughs> around the UK, and it's been thoroughly enjoyable. And I just hope everyone's uh, enjoyed it at home. who's been uh, following and, uh, and watching on free sports. Extension call. So Liam did get a ball with his break at the table. Yeah, those are his choice. Needs that to come out nice and it hasn't. So issues abound. Or the man who's one no up. And then despite the fact that he's potted a couple of balls off the break. It, it wasn't particularly easy for him there. No, he's um, he was trying to obviously develop that yellow. It's uh, not worked, so now it's into uh, defence mode. But um, you know, Liam is one of the very best around uh, when it gets um, a little bit messy. So um, you know, he won't uh, he won't mind that too much. Got a much more free flowing player. Likes to uh, get on with the clearances. But um, you know, he's got to uh, he's got to be careful here because he knows uh, Liam's on the attack. 
these races to six are, uh, you know, they can be over pretty quickly. And uh, he certainly doesn't want to be going, uh, you know, two, three frames behind uh, to Liam. That will be a pretty tall order to overcome. So, um, see the shot clock ticking. Liam is a master making things difficult for his opponent but Scott Gillespie hasn't got where he's got in the game without having no safety game whatsoever he might be one of the most attacking players about but when he has to he can also do the do the dirty work as it were he certainly can and uh, you know you don't win the titles that, um, that Scott Gillespie's won without having uh, more to your armory than just uh, being a great potter so yeah, he's more than capable of, uh, of matching Liam, but um, Liam is generally regarded as one of the top players, um, not only in black ball, but uh, you know when he gets to when he gets to this type of frame, he certainly didn't want that. Would have preferred to have uh, probably put that clean, and then he may well have looked to have pot that yellow that uh, that well, the yellow just glanced off and then try and disturb the cluster um, yeah I think it's written all over his face how much he didn't want that to happen this is a difficult situation yeah, he's just gonna uh, it still hasn't come out nicely for him but that's quite a clever shot pocket. yeah it's quite a clever shot though he's um, He's just tried to nudge those balls, just to try and develop his yellows without leaving Scott anything to go at. And uh, I think um, this bottom yellow here will go into this pocket here. So um, Scott has got to be careful. But now it's Scott's turn to attack. This is where he much prefers to be, on the offensive. <laughs> but nothing easy. He can roll this pot into the left centre, but um, can he hold for uh, the red that's just above the two ne next, next to the black? But somehow he's got to develop that cluster of the three balls. Shot clock ticking. Time's running out. Oh, he's played that really nicely now. Is he on the red? I think he has just about held it. He has the wrong angle to, uh, to pot it and disturb the cluster on this shot. as well now can you potentially look at using the red that's a little further off the cushion to break into the packet I think while he's on it he'll take the one down the rail now no he's going into the cluster so he needs a little bit of luck and that's not too bad does that red above the black go in the corner Isn't it? And that goes. So this needs good cue in this shot. This isn't easy. Cued it absolutely superbly. Well, he looks a little bit ticked off. I just wonder if. not quite right for him if it's a little straight it makes this next positional shot ultra difficult he's just got to absolutely dolly that in dead weight and is it going to get there it is played that really well black in the same pocket 
Well, that's a really well pieced together break. Really well pieced together break from Scott Gillespie. Who ties things up, one apiece in the semi-final. And here's a reminder of what Scott's been up to over the recent months on the IPA tour. the quarterfinals of the UK amateur last year. It's worth reminding ourselves yeah, that he is an amateur player. Yeah, he's, he's technically an amateur player, but, um, you know, everybody knows that he is... Uh, in, in name, not nature. <laughs> yeah, um, everybody knows that he's a professional standard player. It's just that he's not um, managed to play in enough events to, um, to qualify for, for the pro status. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll see a bit more of him uh, on, the, on the IPA tour. Um, if not this year, then next year, um, because you know that's where he deserves to be. And uh, you know, with all the events coming up now on on free sports, um, that you know we need the, the likes of Scott Gillespie to be to be in those events. So um, let's hope he uh, can uh, maybe commit a little bit more time, and we can see more of him. Not missing any action. We're just making sure the balls are all. Right, to the exact specifications of our two players. And it is Scott to break. He does have a very, very good one. And this has come out a lot nicer than his previous. He'd be pleased with that one. His first was a touch awkward. This is altogether a little bit more appealing. Yeah, he's given them a good old crunch and uh, red in the corner. But, um, you know, he's got... Um, and he'll be looking at the yellows. If the yellow just goes past this um, red into the bottom right-hand corner, then uh, I think that's what he'll be looking to go at. He could maybe put this one into the centre and try and move it off this uh, bottom rail with a little bit of uh, left-hand side. He's used the extension at the start of the frame. And in a situation like this, it's Scott's got this mapped out. You wouldn't expect him to take a huge amount of time. Well, yes. Frame. I think we'll see as the as the pressure mounts and we get to the um, the final stages of these finals, the uh, the, the players will be uh, using every second available. I think he's going to try and move it on this shot. Yeah. And that's not worked out. That was always the risk. Has he got a shot? I think he can play up to the top left of the table. Just about squeeze through, but it's not ideal. This is his only option. So he can still put, he can still keep attacking. down the queue, queue arm there of Scott. So he could now try to flick this one into the middle bag and then with lots of right hand side try and flick, flick the white ball. And we're going to put this one into there then try and flicking it lots of side on there just like that just to free that yellow up. But is he on anything? That's always the risk yeah and if he's not on anything he, he's been a little bit unlucky because he's got a couple of balls that are um, over you know, pretty close to the to the banks at the corner and the fact that he can't see any of those he's he's been a tad unfortunate I'm not sure if you can see the one straight straight up into the top left that's nearest that red on the boat line he possibly can't he's swerving it no he's digging down that's just on the oh Well, that's a miss. A shake of the head. Poor Scott. Rattled the drills. Yeah, it was, it was a little bit unlucky there. But uh, he's had a little bit of look back. You know, he's, um, he's, he's tied Liam's red up. So a bit of good news, bad news there. There's 
a big shot for Liam. He needs to try and win this bag. And he's just going to try and keep things tight. Oh, we could be heading into a tactical frame here. First frame, in which Liam Dunster went on to win. But it's been interesting, isn't it? Both players have had chances in all of our frames so far. Yeah, we've got to remember these guys aren't, you know, the human. And there's a lot at stake tonight, and a lot of money, and a lot of prestige. And we've got, you know, a big audience watching at home. Or on there. Various devices. And, uh, all adds to the pressure. It's not every day you get to the final stages of a major televised competition. So that's a little bit careless from Liam. I don't think we're too pleased with that one. enough room for Scott to put this yellow into the bottom left corner. Played that nicely and the reaction from Liam tells you all you needed to know. I think he's crossing himself with his slight error which has given Scott the chance there and he's going to try and take advantage of it. It's very rare that you get Chance gifted to you by Liam Dunster. He's got into that one a little bit too much. <coughs> Shouldn't be a problem with the pot. Just needs to uh, judge the positional side. You can take either ball here. Just depends how he. Uh, and he sees it. If he takes the one into the left, it looks like it's a natural angle for the white to bounce off the cushion and then onto the red that's nearest the yellow, but um, he's taking the uh, easier pot. He's under hit that one. And he's definitely under hit that one, so lots of uh, signs of tension here. See the fantastic trophy there for the winner. Take pride of place on the uh, on the mantelpiece. Oh, he's just dying up this, yeah, but it's not an easy one. Has to play it. No extensions left. He's going into the left corner. He's missed it. Yeah, big exhale from Scott. It's a good effort at the part. I think it might have been one that he felt like he had to take. It was difficult to hold for that black in the middle pocket. Yeah, it looked, it looked from here, it looked uh, a nice natural angle to, to pot it in the middle and then take the black into the same pocket. Um, obviously the uh, angle was probably not quite what it, what it appeared. But, um, nothing easy for Liam here, he's trying to, I think, probably play a safety. So if he if he took that into the middle bag, he maybe he just thought you know um, it was a little bit narrow. So I'll, I'll go for you know the more difficult pot, but I've got more bag to aim at, as it were. So yeah, I think it might have played on his mind. It was a difficult drop in playing it. What he would have had to play it pretty slow as well. Yeah, but um, anyway, he's got a two cushion escape here. If he pots it, then he's on the black. This looks close. This looks very close. And he's 
That is absolutely superb shot. Well, that was the gamble that Liam took. It was the gamble. With where that yellow was, he knew that if Scott hit it, it almost had to go in. And the black is sunk as well. Two on Gillespie. Good finish after a bit of difficulty towards the end of that frame. He had quite a lot to aim for there. Yeah, using all his experience there and knowledge of the angles and the 7 by 4 And uh, played it very nicely, very confidently at the right pace. Got a nice little double kiss on the yellow. And uh, great pop. And I mentioned earlier the route that, well, part of the route that Scott Gillespie had to take. This was how he got to this stage. Took out Scott Ross and Ryan Fleming in the uh, round of Falkirk towards the latter stages of this Champions Cup. And then on, in our first round, actually, of the knockout stages in the last 16, beating Simon Ward and Mark Farnsworth both in the same night is not bad going, to say the least. I think it's fair to say that Scott Gillespie has had the hardest draw of anyone in this competition. Um, those four players that he's he's overcome, top draw players, and uh, he's got another one now in the shape of Liam Dunster. But uh, no one's really pushed him all the way, so that just shows um, what great form, what great confidence uh, that Scott's playing in at the moment. So a foul break from Liam, and he's a touch unlucky. The white gets kicked in by that red. You can see there the way that the break was played by. He really put his, all his arm into it. Yeah, using all that weight training that he does to. Uh, yeah, if, uh, power as he can, muster. Now that's it's come out okay, but probably not ideal for Scott. I think he's obviously going to take reds. But the third one in, with his bottom right pocket, is now a little bit of a problem for him. Yeah, I think he can develop that though when he plays the plant. So he'll play the plant and then just nudge that red across towards that um, corner pocket. So um, everything else in the open. So a great chance here to uh, really take a, a stranglehold in this match. Scott was feeling very confident when I was chatting to him earlier on. He's always a very confident player anyway. He has been playing so well in recent weeks, particularly in this Champions Cup. It's very understandable that he's really flying at the moment. But that won't give him a bit of an issue. It's not ideal. I think he can still clip the one into the left middle. Yeah, it's just, just not quite caught that as, as he would have hoped. Caught it a little bit too thick. But um, he can still take the one into the left centre. No, he can't. He's taking the more difficult one into the top left corner. And some way off. near it in the ends and <coughs> yeah caught that very thick missed it by a mile by his very high standards and I think it's fair to say that both players are feeling the pinch a little bit <laughs> yeah uh, but despite that miss Scott still, still in good shape in this frame he's, he's not left Liam anything easy to go at he's only left him a safety a little plant Little plant safety, which he's played well. And it's been a slow start to this semi final than we might have expected between two such high quality operators, but in fairness to them, it's 
not been particularly easy for either straight off the brakes. And by that same token, it's understandable that in the first few frames there are a couple of butterflies floating around. Yeah, definitely. A bit like these beetles that uh, seem to be uh, everywhere. But um, so he's looking here now. If he's, I don't know if he's got the angle on the uh, the right end of the two reds. So just to put that into the right corner and then to spin the white round to try and disturb that red that's nearest the yellow. I, I'm not sure he's quite got the angle. He would have preferred to have uh, been on the bottom one uh, because that uh, would have given him a, a better angle to, to move it. I mean, he, he could be tempted to take the one into the top left to, to, to give him that, um, that angle. the angle he, he needed to be in anywhere on this line um, which gave him gives him the the right angle so this is the big shot and it's, it's not gonna, gonna be easy that. but he's got a shot got great contact on it Again, didn't overhit it, just played it at the right pace, with the right, right judgment, and uh, the shot of a, a, a confident player. You know, if you're a bit, a bit out of sorts, you sort of hit those a little bit too hard, you're a little bit anxious. Buries that one, great queuing. And this will be 3-1 now, or at least it should be. White through, I'll punch it back off the cushion, the black into the same pocket. Beautifully done, 3 1. Let's go, Gillespie. Sorry, dear General. Not a lot Liam could have done, really. He played a good safety, but, um, you know, Scott's, um, <laughs> Scott's just taking out these difficult chances, and, uh, you know, Liam's got it all to do. Well, here's how. Liam got his route through to tonight's semi-final. He had a really, really difficult draw. Uh, again, one of our later rounds in Scotland. Mark Boyle in the in the final there. To say that we had Mark Boyle and Liam Dunster in the same group in the first round. Very, very tough indeed. But he got a good win there, 6-4. And Drew Hughes and Gavin Robinson were dispatched in Chester in our second week of... Last 16 matches, and here he is in the final four, and he'll feel where he deserves to be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, he's one of the form players of the past 12 months, is Liam. And uh, trophy cabinet uh, that's uh, bulging with silverware, and uh, yeah, fully deserves his place. You know, he's had a tough draw as well. You know, they're not easy games. He's um, he's played. Uh, you know, on paper they look fairly uh, convincing, but. Um, you know, there's no there's no easy matches in this Champions Cup, and uh, you know we've seen that many shocks, and uh, anything is possible. Scott just asking for the horse to be re-racked once more. Again, this is all part of the meticulous nature of these players. They want every single ball to be touching. Helps get that explosion out of the pack. Yeah, and with so much at stake, um, it's vitally important that uh, they get the perfect setup. And that looks dry. And it not only looks dry, it looks mighty inviting. Yeah, just uh, another turn on that yellow, and it was in the corner bag, but. Um, that's the nature of the game. Almost got a little help in hand. He's just watching the uh, 
the replay of his own break there, thinking, how on earth is that yellow not quite dropped into the pocket? But, uh, yeah, can't worry about that now. You know, the pull gods weren't with him that time. But um, not what you can do. It was a great break. Lots of movement. And uh, gods just weren't smiling on him that time. But, you know, no one can expect to pull off every break. He's only dry one out of three, so you know it's um, it's acceptable. And this is the first real clear opportunity that Liam's had. In the frame he won, it was scrappy. And it wasn't particularly easy, but this is by far and away his best chance at a clearance from the start of the frame. Yeah, he's got to kill this one well. He's not really got much of his hand on the table at the moment, so this will test his cue in. Yeah, nailed it. That was a good shot. So it's all going to come down to the positional shot on the yellow that's at the side of the red. That's going to. He could well leave that till his last ball. He's got to make sure he gets absolutely perfect position. So I think what he's going to do is going to pop this one into the left corner, probably leave the white a couple of inches back. Uh, from where the yellow is, just screw it back a couple of inches. And then those two yellows that he's bridging over, he's going to use those as his target area for the white ball to leave himself on his final yellow. So as long as he misses that red that's just to the left of the yellow, he should be fine. This is then the key shot in the frame. Used ball of the bag. <coughs> they played it well. Yeah, he did, and it's come out nicely for him as well, as you can see. Clear as day, onto his final yellow. And after five frames, before the first break, Almost fittingly in our first semi-final. They're going to be shared evenly between the two players, or as even as they could be between the two players. No one out in front. Ball three. It is 3-2, and it is all to play for in our first semi-final. Crowd are enjoying it. Here in Solihull, we hope you are at home as well. It is tight and tense, and it's exactly what we thought this might be. The IPA Pool Champ Free Sports Champions Cup resumes after the break. The IPA Free Sports Champions Cup Pool is brought to you by Select Car Leasing.
time out. The IPA Free Sports Champions Cup Pool is brought to you by Select Car Leasing. Welcome back to Solihull IPA Free Sports Champions Cup action. It is a grand final night. We start though with two semi-finals. This is our first, Liam Dunster is two shots away here and squaring things up at three each a clinical frame from the Scott who is now very close to sealing sixth frame of the match and he does indeed square things right back up Here, there, the ripple of applause inside the venue here at Solly Hull. Very knowledgeable, full crowd in these parts. And we can take a small trip down memory lane here. This is the last 64 of the Champions Cup. The uh, first round fixtures, which we've seen all the way across the UK, across the first 16 weeks of this competition. Mika Rooney versus Simon Ward, a personal highlight down in Neath with the women's world champion coming back from 5-1 down to force a decider against the men's world championship finalist. Some terrific matches everywhere you look really. See there in the middle, Scott Gillespie taking out Scott Ross. Two very good friends on and off the table. Tough match for Scott Gillespie, who's telling me. Never easy to play your close pal. William 
Dunstert later on. Down the table there, getting the win. Over Mark Fleming. Both players have been very consistent. Two six two wins, two six four wins. Neither has gone to a decider yet. Yet in the Champions Cup. Scott with the break. And we've seen him look happier. He is at the table. Red went down. And you just got to think this one through. <laughs> the reds are all out in the open pretty much, but the black is a real issue as you can see. That's why he's used the extension just to figure out exactly what he's going to do with this black ball. He's tried to get into it straight away. It's not perfect. It's a start. For him. Just wonder if he'll now just settle for the double. Which I think may even be on into both middle and corner pocket. Reds take care of themselves. All very straightforward. Can pot any one of the four from where he is on the table pretty easily. Black again, and he's run into problems. Had to hit that. Total cord. He's total snookered. And he's in total trouble. Big chance for Liam Dunster. Big chance. <coughs> Liam's yellows are not without their own issues. Red out of the way. I just wonder actually if those two yellows plan. I think they may do. with that red there. You know, he's just setting himself up for the safety and this is going to be very tough to get out of. Total that is needless to say, a total snooker. That's a good hit. Terrific hit from Scott Gillespie. It's about all he could really hope for. Great 
sharks. He's going to be snookered again. Total cold. Liam determined to make things difficult for Scott while he still has his own balls to develop. Safety. And Liam will be his last one. One would imagine. Good hit. And it's not come out too badly, actually, with Scott there. It's kind of about as good as he possibly could have wished for. I don't think Liam can actually hit this yellow straight or can he? No, he can't. Thought he'd sneaked in behind it, but no, Liam could just play it. Couldn't quite see the angle. To pot it, perhaps. Oh, no, he could. Yeah, it does go down as a missed shot. Well, that will decide the frame. White goes in, and the frame is all but over. Well, Scott Gillespie, that's all it takes in that scenario. So a shot and a visit for Liam, and this now is routine. It was very, very difficult for Scott Gillespie as soon as he snooked himself. <laughs> That 
Slight error. That's cost him. And Dunstep. Can go four, three, to the good. And it's there. was the bottom half of the Champions Cup. We'll see the first name on that list, Ronan McCarthy, a little bit later on. He's taking on Jack Whelan in our second semi-final tonight. He's towards the bottom of the list against Matt Ward. He won through 6-4. Some top players wherever you look in this one. All of them have been whittled gradually down to four. It has been hugely entertaining process. Over many weeks. And we've been speaking to a lot of the players. They've really enjoyed the process, not just in playing in the Champions Cup, but also in watching their fellow pros as well. in, gets a ball. See if he can squeeze through. Extension, close. See, it was close. Decided against it. It's a very thin cut and hasn't he played that well? Great shot. That was very, very thin. Played it beautifully. chance then for Liam here to put himself one frame away from the final. It's a good opportunity this. Yeah, and the match has uh, very subtly just completely changed. Uh, the early part of this match is it was generally Scott that was that was bossing and now uh, Liam's just completely taken over. Uh, obviously wasn't helped by uh, when uh, Scott was uh, going for a clearance and he uh, tried to develop the black and ended up snooker himself. That was the last frame. But uh, all the momentum now is uh, is with Liam and uh, he looks the likely winner at the moment. He was 3-1 down, don't forget. He's won the last three frames on the trot. He's looking to make it four. Two of those frames have come on the Scott Gillespie break as well. Again, two ways he could play this. He could use the red as a, as a cushion, which he has done. So it's all about getting position on this black, which he'll take into the bottom left-hand corner.
just on the edge of running out of time here. Yeah, so could, he could nudge into take. the block here if he wanted. Yeah, just to develop it. It's a well, well judged shot. Didn't think he had that angle, but he did. Played it really well. Gives yeah. him so many more options. And gives him a much easier option as well. Yeah, that was uh, that was well played. This should be straightforward from here. Simple enough, and you can see he's left himself pretty much gun barrel straight on the black here. This requires top queuing, but. He's in the groove, he's feeling it. Missed for four frames on the spin and one away on the final. Absolutely nails the pot. Well, the Champions Cup has been a wonderful event. We've thoroughly enjoyed it. And the pool does not stop on free sports. In fact, it, well, it's not far off. Beginning again, as it were. The Premier League is on its way to your screens on free sports very, very shortly. And uh, these are the players who we know for a fact will be playing in it. Uh, one still to be decided. That's wild card at the bottom there. And the top five ranked players and Three players who have qualified through various qualifying tournaments. Kev, I know this is a tournament you're really excited about. Yeah, absolutely. Again, another first here on Free Sports. And uh, we're going to see the cream of the crop going head-to-head -head over 13 weeks to uh, find our ultimate Premier League champion. And, um, yeah, looking, really looking forward to it. Every week we'll be playing this uh, new, new superb arena. It's going to be quick fire even quicker than the Champions Cup and uh, short races but um, yeah, it's going to be full on action so uh, really looking forward to it was hoping for a, a month off over the summer but uh, unfortunately Premier League has, uh, has, has come to fruition it has indeed it's, uh, it's been a wonderful five months or so this Champions Cup and we thoroughly enjoyed Mondays been taken over. Mondays have become pool nights. But uh, get used to seeing us on Wednesdays like we are today. Because that's the Premier League. We'll be joining you for the very first time for the Premier League. Wednesday the 18th of July. It's in just two weeks' time. Yeah, one of the beauty beauty elements of the Premier League is that every match will have money attached to it. So uh, there's no dead matches because um, the players um, will receive a, 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 a prize as such for, for winning each match. Uh, the pot is split if they if they if they tie. So um, you know there's no dead matches because there's always something to play for, and uh, these boys like playing for money. So um, they'll be uh, trying their very best in in every single match. It'll be a league format. We'll lose a few. After a few weeks, eventually we will have a Premier League champion. But, never all that, we've got a Champions Cup champion's crown first. And Liam Dunster is at the table. 5 3 up. He was a little bit unlucky, Scott Gillespie. He had a good break where he's at the table, but. The white really didn't come out nicely for him. No, he was left with absolutely nothing to go at. Wow, what a combination <laughs> shot there from Liam Dunster. <laughs> what a shot that is. Have a look at this. Crisp as you like. That is top draw. And I think he can pot the one into the bottom right hand corner and try and disturb the red that's on the left hand side if you can't get to the red at least try and disturb the yellows it's going to have to be um, 
careful though, he, he, he probably wants to try and disturb the yellow that's nearest the corner back, so um, he needs to make sure he hits that on the right side. Let's play another plant. <coughs> now, does this red squeeze past the yellow? I'm not sure that does. I think he's just looking to try and take control of the bag, but um, this is a dangerous shot. I think he's just got there. So he's in the box seat in this frame, the frame that he needs to uh, take him to tonight's final. chance to become the Champions Cup winner. Where's that what, yellow going? Is he going to foul? Pop the red? He has. Oh, and that could be that. That could well be that. He's obviously not banking on that because he's assuming the yellow that's potted the red is going in the pocket. Mm. But in missing the pot and sending it back down the table, Just Just Liam forced him to um, take on the uh, the difficult pot though. So it was um, clever play from Liam, forcing uh, Scott to uh, to push the boat out a bit. Got this match at his hands. Yeah, he certainly does. Liam is huge favourite now. Huge favourite. Let's do develop here. Looks like to bounce off. Not going up too kindly for him. Slightly loose, but I think he'll be reasonably pleased. It's certainly a position he would have liked to have seen himself in at the start of this match. Yes, yeah, he's. he's He's got a couple of ways he can play this. I, I think he'll probably play the pot and he wants to try and kiss the yellow. But alternatively he could he could just leave the white in this sort of area and then it leaves himself a nice angle to pop the, the red into the centre. But he's played that absolutely perfectly. You know, hit by hitting the yellow, freeze the black. And now the uh, the frame and match is, is there for Liam Dunster. Shouldn't be any errors from here. That was um, a lot harder shot than it looked, but played it absolutely pinpoint. And um, yeah, great performance from Liam Dunster from uh, a bit of a shaky start. But um, shaky start is right, Kelly was 3 1 down. Yep. And this will. Be five frames on the spin, which is no mean feat against the player, a player of the quality of Scott Gillespie, who has looked pretty unbeatable so far in this Champions Cup. He's run into a very, very high quality operator here in great form. And Liam Dunstep is now. One pot away, and it's a simple one to secure his place in the Champions Cup final. Big deep breath from Liam. He's there. The first semi-final goes the way of Dunster, who has done it. It being qualifying for tonight's final. Terrific performance from the Scott who beat his fellow countryman, from Liam rather, who beat his fellow countryman Scott Gillespie in a terrific performance. He will play the winner of Rona McCarthy and Jack Whelan. And our second semi-final is next. The IPA Free Sports Champions Cup Pool is brought to you by Select Car Leasing.
The IPA Free Sports Champions Cup Pool is brought to you by Select Car Leasing. Welcome back to Solihull, IPA Free Sports Champions Cup. We have our first finalist, Liam Dunster, after 21 weeks. You're here, you're in the final. First of all, how does that sound? Yeah, absolutely great. I'm, I'm just delighted to be here. I feel like I played really well and I've just continued that form throughout the tournament. I, I don't think there's been a single match that I've, I've not played well in. Yeah, it seems to be that way. No match has gone to a decider for yourself. Does that just give you an indication of where your form's at at the minute? Not really, no. I mean, I could beat somebody 6-1, I could beat somebody 6-5. It doesn't really reflect it how, on how I play. Um, so I wouldn't say that makes a difference, no. And in terms of how you are playing at the moment, were you pleased to come, obviously, down here to Solihull and give yourself a, a, a good display in a new environment and obviously get yourself through to the final as well? Yeah, like I say, just delighted to be here. I mean, the setup's great. Uh, and IP is doing a really good job at the minute. Um, so, yeah, really happy to be in the final and involved in the TV tournaments. And how much are you looking forward to our second semi, Jack versus Ronan? Yeah, I'll be watching it closely, yeah. I'll be sitting at the sidelines watching. Scouting the opposition, or do you not mind? Yeah, scouting them out, yeah. Seeing, seeing what, what they're missing, seeing what they're putting. Yeah. Well, we look forward to what should be a cracking final. Congratulations on making it. Thank you. Cheers. And just a reminder of just how he did it.
Dunster then makes his way through to tonight's final. He'll play one of these two gentlemen. Jack Whelan on the right, just at the centre of the table there, against Ronan McCarthy. A chance to take on Liam Dunster for the trophy and the prize money. £5,000 to the winner. These players have had good runs through to this stage of the competition. Ronan McCarthy through to the quarter final, only dropped one frame, which is quite remarkable given the standard of opposition. Wonderful Q artist for many years. So well regarded in the game. And Jack Whelan, a former world champion himself, getting back to his best. Just take a look here of at rather our last 16. These are all the games that we've seen in the last month on Free Sports. Some really, really top quality performances. Let's take a look at the quarter final lineup. It was hugely impressive. Was edged out by Scott Gillespie. Dunster taking out Robinson. McCarthy with a brilliant 6 3 win over Jason Remington having. Earlier dispatched John McAllister, 6-1. And then... Jack Whelan taking out David Adnall. Six frames to three. And some wonderful individual performances. Two players need just one more to make their way through to tonight's final to face off against Liam Dunster. Just a small delay to the start of proceedings here. Some technical problems, I think, out there in the arena. Our two players. Wait anxiously. So you get this semi final underway. Well, it looks like we're just about ready to go. Ronan McCarthy versus Jack Whelan. <laughs> Two hugely, hugely talented players. Jack is accustomed to playing here in Solly Hope. Played all four of his matches in this venue. A touch different to what it does now, however, of course. Started off his Champions Cup journey all the way back in week two of the competition. Back in Washington. 
released. That is the 16 and quarter final matches here. And the man from Northern Ireland. Looking dry. First up here. It's not the ideal start for Ronan. And could well be the ideal start for Jack. But he's got to make a ball first. And Ronan will be most pleased. But he's not left anything particularly easy. Even the right ball where he has. What can Jack produce? Stab out that yellow to the top corner. It's not come off for him. And running here maybe with the game's first real chance. Yeah, difficult uh, first pot there for Jack, having to uh, lift the cue up. Probably still suffering a little bit with his hand, as uh, we saw last week. Wasn't uh, in the best of uh, situations with that. Uh, so they're weak to recover. And, uh, you know, arguably the form player of this tournament right through has been Ronan McCarthy. Can he keep that form going for uh, two more matches? He's uh, pretty much uh, obliterated. All before him. And, uh, he's going to be uh, looking to uh, take this title back home to Ireland with the form that he's in. No player, has lost fewer frames than Ronan McCarthy. In this competition. As Liam was saying in his interview, earlier on, it's not necessarily an indication of how well necessarily you're playing, how many frames you concede. It tends to be the performance of the opponent more than anything else. In Ronan's case, there is an element of his ability shining through. Two 6 0 performances in Washington in the opening round of the competition it was devastating. Yeah, he was in some incredible form. Yeah. He was just so graceful and uh, elegant around the table, just clearing up and, you know, playing. Uh, playing <coughs> Quite a quick pace as well, it has to be said. Ten seconds. Let him play safe. It was interesting, so uh, from this angle it looked like he could. Uh, clip that in. So Jack will be pleased to uh, to be back at the table. It's obviously not an easy setup for either colour with the sort of line of red, yellow, red, yellow to the right of the table. Jack obviously fancies it. If he's going for the clearance, he's obviously got one problem area. Can't see him going for the clearance here. I think he's going to try and just um, use his ball advantage to uh, look a better opening. I think the last thing he wants to do is just to push the boat out a bit too far and then just leave it nice and easy for Ronan. But uh, we'll see. See how he's feeling. <coughs> Jack is a 
terrifically aggressive player. shake of the head which makes me think that was an attempt at the pot yeah it definitely was so gives the opportunity back to uh, back to Ronan and if there's anyone chance to this fellow would be pretty high on your list like an assassin <laughs> you certainly don't want to give him two chances of frame I think he can uh, yeah I was just about to say I think he could clip that in and just uh, hit the yellow and he has done and uh, he's looking in good shape now to uh, take this opening frame so not quite straightforward Pots are easy enough, but it's whether he can uh, put the white ball in the right place to make it an easy black. So he'll just need to screw down. Probably a little bit too pacey. He may need to come round off, uh, off a couple of cushions. And try and screw between that gap between those two yellows the side rail, bottom rail and then for the black into the bottom right corner just like that lovely shot 1-0 then to the Northern Irishman who clinically takes out the first frame of this semi-final and if history has told us anything Jack Whelan will struggle to get <laughs> frames on the board. He has to take his chances when they arrive, which he'll be hoping is in this next frame. This is Ronan's recent tournament history. He won the Welsh Professional Championship against Jimmy Carney back in February. A good run in the English Professional as well. Got to the British Open final at the end of last year, which he beat Simon Ward in. And he really has, in this competition, just up to his game, that extra level. We all know how good a player he is, but in this competition, it's been frightening at times how good he's been. Yeah, it's been uh, he's been a revelation, and uh, you know, not being at all uh, bothered by the shot clock, he's just played at a, a really nice pace, really fluent, and um, has just <laughs> just done a demolition job on his uh, four previous opponents. We wow. mentioned the issue that Jack had with his hand last week. It slightly affected his break in particular. And it didn't affect that one. No. That was uh, that was the normal um, power break that we uh, expect from Jack and what was the bedrock of his 2015 World Championship success. Huge break uh, when he's... Uh, Time in the ball. A break so big, he potted the black, which is why it's been re racked It's not a foul. Jack will get the chance to break again. And, uh, such as the power he gets onto this. Crash, those balls, and the, the black just gets a little tickle from from the red. As you say, black ball. We rack the balls up, and he gets to do it all again. I think it's safe to say, no ill effects of the injury he had in his hand. And not week. looking back like he, he was doing last week. You see a white jumping up off the table. It's the power that he's generating. It's terrific power in this. The black 
just gives that yellow a little bit of a helping hand. First opportunity then for, for Jack. Mentioned at the top of this match, we've started to see the best of Jack Wheeler in this competition. Didn't have the greatest of years following his world title win, I think he'd be the first to admit. He is a hugely talented player. And he's found some of his best form in this competition. Did play in the, uh, in the recent qualifying event for the Premier League that we were mentioning earlier. Didn't quite win it. That's the final of it. Yeah, got by Jimmy Carney. Yeah, got beaten the final by uh, Jimmy Carney, who, um, <coughs> from all reports, played uh, absolutely fantastically all day. Went through the double elimination competition uh, unbeaten, and. Uh, as you say, came through the final against Jack. I think it was 8-4. So we'll see Jimmy in a few weeks' time when the Premier League uh, rolls into town. And Solly Hull. It's competition I know Jack is really keen to be a part of. He's been disappointed not to qualify there in that qualification tournament, but... There is that one potential place left with a wild card. <coughs> and he'll be hoping that a performance here tonight, a win in the Champions Cup, could be enough to supply that wild card position. nicely through these. Good crowding tonight. I should know that it's a very knowledgeable pool crowd here in Solihull. It's a real hot spot for key sports in this area. A lot of very good players around as we saw with Lee Warren, the local qualifier, making it through to the last 16 of this event. their pool in these parts. And they'll be enjoying the fair on offer from Jack Whelan here. Two shots away from scoring things back up. Tricky block. It's not giving me by any stretch. Needs to cue it. That looks pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Sounds about right. And Jack Whelan squares things back up. It's one all. Yeah, nice breaking dish there from Jack. Get himself right back into this match. He's going to feel a lot better now. He's got that frame on the board. And you can see his performances of late have really picked up. And it's coincided with his performance, I think, in the Champions Cup. He got to the quarter-final of the Scottish Professional. Quarter final of the Scottish Open as well, played really well that weekend up in Aberdeen. Semi final of the English professional. And it's almost as if his Champions Cup performances has ignited him again, fueled the fire. Yeah, absolutely. I think what we're seeing is several players who are now starting to either get back in form or up the game, such um such as the events that are now coming through, you know, pretty thick and fast. We you know we've got the tour events. We've got the Champions Cup, Premier League, we've got the Masters as well in, in November that we'll, I'm sure we'll be talking about over the next uh, few weeks. So I think uh, you know a lot of the players are now realising that um, there's some, some great prize money on offer and uh, you know, they're going to have to start to um, up their performance levels and I think we're, we're starting to see that now. And then with the break, he's made a ball. Very good first 
shot. Because now, every red has a pocket. And I think he's going to look to cannon into this black as soon as possible. A trait that you often see in Ronan, he'll go after his double areas pretty much immediately. And there you go. And now the frame's open right up for him. Just good to perfection. And on these, uh, on these blue cloths, you can get quite a lot of grip, and you see that white just gripping the cloth and spinning into that uh, yellow and uh, yellow and black, and just uh, freeing it up. We only needed to move the black a few inches just to make it available into. Uh, well, it goes into basically four pockets now, but um, I'm sure it'll be heading into that left centre in about four shots' time. how quickly this game uh, ebbs and flows. Well, this has been one of the quickest frames I can remember in the tournament, I think. Yeah, it's almost Jordan Shepard-esque. You know, this clearance has been uh, a couple of minutes, if that. And, uh, well, anything Jack Whelan can do, Ronan McCarthy can do as well. It's 2-1 to back-to-back breaks and dishes from these two consummate Q artists. Here's how Ronan McCarthy secured his place in this semi-final. Only dropped one frame on his route through to the quarters. Lost three against Jason Rivington. The mask started to slip. Yes, he proved he was human against uh, Jason Rivington. He was the, the only player to um, get even close to uh, close to run in, in this event so um, let's see what Jack can do he's got one on the board but uh, he still needs another five so. yeah and it really needs to be said how difficult going 6-0 6-0 6-1 in this competition is it's a remarkable record yeah I mean uh, you know he just played impeccable pool and it was a pleasure to watch and to uh, to be there particularly at Washington and uh, you know, just watched uh, watch the master at work. Now White's in for Jack, off the break, which is about the worst thing you can do. He potted the black on his first one, that's a re-rack, pop the white though, and it's a shot and a visit for your opponent, and you can see there it wasn't kicked in, just screwed straight off the pack into the corner, and that is the telltale sign of an error. And I don't think he's feeling particularly disappointed. I think he's just angling his head so he can watch the replay of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a screen at the side, and I think he's just trying to uh, just get a little sneaky peek at that. But, um, yeah, it happens, you know. Most, most players do it, but uh, you know, what you don't want to be doing is uh, the semi final of a major competition. But, um, I think Ronan just uh, potting that yellow to clear the way for um, an assault on these red balls. And, uh, the form is in. You wouldn't bet against him. No, it is very difficult, I think, to bet against Ronan McCarthy in this competition. Such has been his dominance. Don't count out Jack just yet, though. He's not really done an awful lot wrong in this match so far. No, it's still early days, you know. Jack Whelan is an ex-world champion, and uh, you don't become an ex-world champion uh, without having a lot of resolve. And, uh, you know, we saw in the last match, Liam was 3-1 down, and uh, he turned on the afterburners and, uh, and won 6-3. And, uh, you know, Jack Whelan is, is more than capable of, uh, of repeating such feats like that. So... Um, it's just going to be great to watch how this match pans out. Uh, these two, these two great players. Mm, just tickles the white through. Give a top spin. Leaves himself handy. You can see there the England flags flying. Only one Englishman in the last four. And Jack Whelan will certainly hope that it's coming home. Liam Dunster, as potential finalist, he was 
Pretty unimpressed with the England <laughs> embellishment on the walls. So he's, he's going to play a little delicate one here. Uh, he's going to screw back. To, he's only got a sort of small area to uh, to put the white in. Yeah, so that's made him change his mind and uh, take this one straight into the uh, corner. And he's a little bit short there as well. So now it's, this white has got to travel up and down, probably off uh, two cushions. He wants to try and get it somewhere near the centre bag where he is to leave himself a, a shot in the black. But it's going to be awkward queuing. So this is uh, he's going to be quite straight on it as well. So this is going to take a great shot. Where's the white going? Yeah, it qualifies as a great shot. That's pretty good. Even when he makes what human beings would consider a mistake, he always seems to find a way out of it. Robotic Ronan McCarthy gets another frame on the board. We remind ourselves of Jack Whelan's path through to this stage. And I think the, the most impressive win for me was his result over Craig Marsh, who really, it was a really difficult game that for both players, but Jack had to really grind that one out. It was a very strange game for two of the very best breakers in the world. I think I'm right in saying it's that there was only one break where a ball was potted in, in that entire match of 10 frames. It was, it was a strange one, but he really had to grind that game out. He did, and um, yes, Craig's uh, break let him down uh, really badly that night. But uh, you know, Jack, uh, Jack did what it had to do and um, closed the match out really well. And um, then just got through against David Adenell, who's been you know one of the uh, revelations of um, of the tournament. Tremendous victory in the final over David Adnall, who, as Kev rightly says, has been superb. So he's yeah, looking at red balls, I think. He can pop this one into the right mid, uh, right corner, bring the white across the side of the table where Ronan stood. He's going to have a choice of reds into the right middle and uh, another great opportunity to uh, close the frame out. Misjudge that one slightly. It's a big frame this as well. The difference obviously between 4-1 and 3-2 is big and we've seen when he goes 4-1 up red top left and he's hit that sweet as a nut and never left the pocket he's a very difficult player to stop and <laughs> he really is in such fine form he's, we have the perfect view there it's a work by our cameraman out on the floor just to line that one up it's exactly what he said it was just Dead sweet, wasn't it? Straight as it comes. Yes, yeah, so he's going to look to this one into the bottom corner now. Can he screw back and just nudge this one? Yeah, I think he's got a nice angle. So he's going to try and nudge this one that's nearest the centre bag. Has it gone too far? It may have gone too far. I think it has. He just wanted to stop there. And it just ran on that extra inch, and I'm not sure he can pop that. So he's got a difficult clip into the left middle. But the white should cannon onto the yellow and stay there. Oh, what a shot. Has he got the legs? Oh, he's had to play the plant. <coughs> well, he can't believe it's not dropped. It was a great effort. Got the, got the line. Absolutely perfect, just didn't quite have enough pace. That would have been the frame. And now, Jack Whelan, now is your time. This is a massive frame. And now, 
just get the feeling it's essential. Jack's hopes of progressing when he wins it. Yeah, there's one uh, danger area. Is that uh, yellow just to the left-hand side of the table? Does go into this middle pocket at uh, the bottom of your screen. So he has got an area to play in to pot it. But that could well be his, uh, his last ball. So again, if you're leaving it to the last, you've got to make sure your position is absolutely on the money. Perfect here, I don't think. I'll try and drop this in with loads of drag, dead weight. Yeah, that's pretty good. So he just needs to ring this white. He can maybe come off one or two two cushions. A little bit of right hand side, just to help that uh, white ball get past that red the yellow into the middle. This is all about controlling the pace of the white ball. And that looks absolutely perfect. So he does. And we talked a couple of minutes ago about character and uh, resolve and uh, Jack Whelan is obviously showing why he is um, an ex-world champion. Gritty, good clearances like that mentioned it was an essential frame for Jack to win and he's done just that. It is 3-2 not 4-1 as it might have been. Brandon McCarthy seldom makes mistakes but when he does if you're his opponent you have to punish them and that's exactly what Jack Whelan has done. He has, like you say, massive frame uh, massive difference between 3-2 and 4-1 and um, yeah, capitalising on uh, Ronan's uh, error, just didn't quite uh, give that plant enough, And uh, but he's right back in this match. He is indeed. Who will be our second semi-final, our second finalist, Ronan McCarthy or Jack Whelan? We'll find out next. The IPA Free Sports Champions Cup Pool is brought to you by Select Car Leasing. Thank you. 
The IPA Free Sports Champions Cup Pool is brought to you by Select Car Leasing. Well, welcome back to the IPA Free Sports Champions Cup. And uh, while we were on the break, we've, uh, we've had a, another frame passes by, Kevin, in rapid style. Yes, and the story of the frame, Jack to break, and he made exactly the same mistake as he did in his previous break. He screwed the white straight in off into the corner pocket, allowed uh, Ronan back to the table. A couple of doubles and some great pots later, and uh, it's 4-2. So it was a great clearance from Ronan, and uh, I say he played a couple of doubles, which were... Uh, we might be able to see shortly, but um, and then another couple of uh, great positional shots. And uh, but that's the break that's just happened. Ronan going dry, Jack at the table. But this is Ronan's performance in the last frame. As Kevin alluded to, a couple of really, really lovely shots. Yeah, and this next double is even better. So not only does he play the double, get the double. But uh, just watch the control that he, he applies to the white ball. Screw between the gap between these, these yellows. Just to leave himself a really tricky red, but um, a great positional shot nonetheless. So, um, yeah, great clearance there from, uh, from Ronan. Oh, good shot. Really nice from Jack, that. Little beautiful plant. And the way he's tapping the table suggests to me that he's not entirely happy, but I think he's he's got an opportunity here. You can see the yellow over the right pocket. Yeah, if that black doesn't go, I think he can just um, glance off the yellow, nice and thin, pop the yellow, and then just develop the black but it's got to be ultra thin on the yellow so that tells me that uh, that black probably goes into the middle bag but uh, he'll want to get right behind it that's for certain yeah it's tight but uh, I think uh, I think if he gets right behind it, he'll be uh, confident of the pop. Yeah, it is close, isn't it? <laughs> You'd want to be close to that. Yeah, and he's just overrun that one as well, because the, the yellow over the top right, he wanted to leave as his last ball, so that he could guarantee being right behind that black. But the fact that he's just overrun that might mean he's going to change course. So he may have to pop that one now. Can still pop the one into the left corner, but um, it's a little bit more tricky. And he can't. I don't think he really screw and leave himself into this bottom right hand corner. This yellow. this yellow there. He's looking to see if he can uh, pop that into into that pocket off the red. I'm not sure he's come out enough. It's mega tight and you can see there he's putting his cue lining up 
and then he wants the white ball. So he's probably going to have to pop this one into the bottom right as we're looking and bring the white across. Just okay. He is oh so close to ever running that, but I think he's just, and I mean just okay. He might not even be that. You can see by his reaction, he's not happy. It looks like he can get to it from that angle, but um, it's obviously incredibly tight. Looks good, but the red hasn't moved. The red hasn't moved, so all he's got, he's actually hit it too well. He wanted to hit it probably a little bit thinner or a little bit thicker. And what he's got now surely is the double. And even if he gets the double, to get onto the black is going to be absolutely, uh, it's going to take an amazing shot. He needs to pull something big out the bag now. What have we got? Got a double and running the white through. Great double. He's got a shot on the black. This is why he's a world champion. He's never in doubt. And he, he had to make sure that the white didn't get in the way of the yellow as well. I mean, there's so many difficult facets to that shot. Now, how's the black? the black? Fantastic. <laughs> big, big, big time clearance from Jack Whelan, who makes it 4-3. That is a huge, huge finish. That could be one of the finishes of the Champions Cup. There was, you know, not only did he have to get a difficult double, he had to get the white out of the way and he had to get position on the black. There was three elements of that shot that were all difficult. And then just to nail the black up the rail, um, knowing that if you miss, you're going to be probably looking at 5-2 and, and an exit out of the competition. Absolutely fantastic pot there from Jack Whelan. Superb. We have seen some fantastic clearances in the Champions Cup. And these are all of our... Uh, well, most of our finals, as it were, each night had its own final. And these are what we've seen. The last 32 officially. And we've seen some terrific performances. A couple of 6 nils for Mark Farnsworth, Simon Ward, and McCarthy as well. And some really, really close ones too. It's been terrific entertainment wherever you've looked, really. Yeah, and I think that's been the theme of the event. You know, every week has thrown up something, be it a shock, a great performance. Um, you know, it's been thoroughly entertaining, and um, it's not over yet. It's another great break from Jack. <laughs> me. Absolutely crunched them. You can just hear that balls clattering into the. I could feel the vibrations in the commentary box. <laughs> yeah. You can just hear the clatter of balls into the tunnels under the table. And he's not left anything out there. He's looking to become the first man to take four frames off Ryan McCarthy in a match in the Champions Cup. He'll tie it up if he wins this frame. And he's got a chance to do just that. Yes. You know, he, he could go for either, either colour here, to be fair. Um, I think he looks like he's favouring yellows. Quite certain how those, those three together, whether the, the two are a plant, I don't think they are. So, despite putting three from the break, he's still got a little bit of work to do. And this is no gimme of a pot either. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Oh, he's furious himself. Doesn't know where to look. I think his only consolation is he's not left anything. Or he's certainly not left anything easy. Yeah, it's still an open table. 
So uh, Ronan will be uh, he'll be looking to pop the yellows, and I think that yellow goes past the red. It does indeed. I say it's nothing easy. I missed the easiest pot in the world. He's too concerned about the balls in the middle of the table. Yes, absolutely. Ronan is on yellows. He's away. Yeah, just uh, screwed into that little cluster just to develop them, and uh, if he can drop that. Uh, Yellow into the middle bag that's just above the two. Looks like it doesn't go, so he maybe have to play a plant. As long as this ball comes out after the plant, it's going to go up towards that top left hand corner. Top right hand corner, sorry. And uh, yet again, the frame at his mercy. You see Jack really behind him. Can you his thoughts? Yeah. There's an interesting shot on yellows. You mentioned he could have gone either colour. Red was certainly the easiest starting pot. Mm. Yeah, he could have done it. He just had that red near the, the, the right cushion, which um, so he's a little bit concerned about, but. Um, He probably went for the right balls. Just uh, unfortunately missed the pot. Queuing was a little bit awkward. Just um, just put him off the pot a little bit. Fine margins. Very fine margins. Brennan McCarthy then. Two pots away from one away. Meeting Liam Dunster in tonight's final. Could have just uh, given that another couple of inches, but um, I expect him to miss this. And McCarthy edges closer to a spot in the final. Reminder of what we've seen in the last four weeks here on Free Sports. Been some terrific performances, not least from the pair that we're witnessing right now. And Jack, who has been your standout player in the last month or so? Well, I can't help thinking about last week. Um, last week just had absolutely everything you could want from a, a pool competition. Uh, it had drama, it had superb play, it had incredible tension at the end, you know, people, players missing pots that they would normally pot with their eyes closed. Um, so, I think it's very difficult to pick a player. Um, I think every player that's uh, been involved has, um, has played their part in what has been uh, a great event for Paul and, um, you know, long may it continue. Rona McCarthy, if there's one thing he'll be annoyed about in this performance, it will be his break. Once he's been at the table, he really has not made many errors. But Jack here has a chance to save his skin in this competition. Another tricky opening pot though. This time he nails it. And that's Ronan's third dry break from from five. So um, it says an awful lot about how well he's playing that he's five three up. <laughs> it is generally regarded as his um, Achilles heel, but um, you know it's it's not all just about the break in this game. You know, it's uh, important, but uh, there's a lot more to it. the top corner. And there's a chance there for Jack. Get all there for him. Don't think he's going to do an awful lot of work here either. Well, again, all the yellows go. It's just a matter of uh, working out his route. Could uh, check out 
go lots of different ways. He's taking the most difficult shot first. Just to get this ball out of the way. Just gets in. That's all it needed. It's to get back to 5-4 and it would be Jack's break. So it's, this match is still in the balance. Yeah, Jack has been breaking superbly if you factor where the reds and the yellows have gone. Oh, he's not hit that one at all. But he didn't cue that one well at all. I don't think it was a kick. I just don't think he cued it well. Unless we get too ahead of ourselves. That is well short. And I think even with a bit of extra pace, it wasn't online. I think um, he's fearing that that could be his last shot in this year's Champions Cup. Although it still work for Ronan. Osterman, big, big favourite here. If it was a, for Jack Whelan, if he got a kick, then it was a pretty huge kick and didn't quite detect anything. Let's see if we can see it on this. Get another look at that shortly. But, um, in the meantime, Ronan is six pots away. I think it's all about the one on the right and cushion. He can play on it or he could play it a double. We've already seen his prowess at doubles earlier on in this match. I didn't detect a kick there. I just don't think he cued it properly. Didn't seem to be any jump on the yellow ball. By the way, that missed pop. It cost him the frame in the match. Rather still a little work to do. Red on the side rail is all that Jack Whelan will be focusing on here. That is his chance. Yeah, so he's lining up the double. After this after this red. He just wants to leave it, so he just has to roll it in, plain ball. Just to leave himself on the black. It's all about this, not wasting any time. on its way it's there it looks good has it got the legs yes it has that's going to do it for Ronan McCarthy who continues his wonderful run in the Champions Cup and makes his way through to the final a valiant performance from Jack Whelan who has been terrific throughout this competition only to exit at the final hurdle to a truly brilliant opponent. It was close, it could have gone either way. There were some crucial junctures during that match. But ultimately, it is Robotic Ronan who marches on. It is, and um, you know, Kyle feeling sorry for Jack there. I'm not sure if he did get a kick, but um, you know, he was a couple of pots away there from um, taking this match, you know, almost down to, to the wire. So, um, unfortunately, we didn't get to see that, but um, great performance nonetheless from Ronan, and uh, we look forward to seeing him in the final. There is our trophy, the Free Sports Champions Cup, and it will be lifted after the break. The IPA Free Sports Champions Cup pool is brought to you by Select Car Leasing.
The IPA Free Sports Champions Cup Pool is brought to you by Select Car Leasing. Welcome back to Solihull IPA Free Sports Champions Cup. We now have our second finalist, Rona McCarthy. Congratulations on making it. First of all, can you just describe your emotions for us? Um, just, um, I'm really delighted to be even here because see, the last couple of days have been I don't know if it's food poisoning or something, but I've actually been in bed for the last couple of days, really not well, so just to be here alone is brilliant, but I actually feel great now, so just timing was perfect, I suppose, because I've, I've felt today the way I felt yesterday, I don't even think I could have played, so just happy to be here competing, and obviously to win is fantastic. We seem to suffer no ill effects out on the table, another really good performance, just one ball missed in that. It seems to bring out the best of you, this competition. Yeah, I only missed one, one plant to the middle, which was hard. I had a wee bit too easy, but apart from that, I don't think I missed anything. So if you keep playing like that, you're going to be, going to be hard to beat. Like, but just have to keep playing like that. <laughs> well, that's the challenge, of course. You've got Liam up in the, in the final, which should be a, a, a cracking game. What are you expecting from it? He's always a tough opponent. Just I have to keep playing the same way as I did. And if I don't, I'll lose. If I keep... If I play as well as I can, I can win, and if I don't, I'll, I'll lose, because Liam's one of those players that if you don't play well against him, he'll beat you, it's simple as that. Well, we're looking forward to a great final. We wish you all the best. Cheers, thank you. And let's take a little reminder of how Ronan got there.
Well, that's what they're playing for. The Champions Cup is on offer to Liam Dunster and Ronan McCarthy. A shake of hands between the two men. This is what it's all about. Trophy put back on its pedestal. And this is the lay of the land. A terrific win from Liam Dunster over Scott Gillespie. A terrific performance from Rona McCarthy in beating Jack Whelan. We started the night with four brilliant players. We started the competition with 64 superb pool players. We all end it with two. And ultimately, one man will be left standing, and that man will be the Champions Cup winner. Okay, if it's going to be a great game. It's probably, in reality, the two best performers in the Champions Cup circuit over the course of the previous 20 weeks. It should be a really, really good final, a really high quality final. Yeah, we see it time and time again, whatever the formats, whatever the race is, you know, cream rises to the top. And I think, as you say, these two players uh, are in the final because they have been consistently uh, the best players each time they've, they've turned up. And um, yeah, I think we're in for a great final. It's, I wouldn't like to call it. Um, I, I really haven't got a clue how this match is going to go. Uh, both players are in great form. Uh, the breaks could be key if Ronan keeps being dry. Maybe that might be the deciding factor. Uh, but we know things can you know, change around quickly in this game. So probably with Liam, a very, very wafer thin favourite on that basis. But um, yep, hold on, folks. It's going to be uh, a great ride. 21 weeks uh, is coming to an end in great fashion. It all comes down to this. Oh, and that's the nightmare start for Liam Dunstep. Ronan McCarthy out of his chair like a jack in the box. As Liam, after all that preparation, all the meticulous care to make sure the balls are lined up exactly as he wanted bins the white straight into the middle pocket that's probably the worst break he's hit probably in about two years i mean he really didn't get hold of that at all i mean the white was skewed straight into the uh, right middle um, yeah, not a great break there and ronan she's <coughs> reds Pretty open for him. Each one has a pocket. And no ring rust for Ronan. I can imagine. And he just finished his match against Jack Whelan. As you can see, a very brief word with Jack after that match. He was pretty gutted as you'd expect him to be after coming so close. Put it all on the line did Jack, you know, he wanted this title. And uh, gave it his all. And uh, he was just not sure whether it was a kick or not. I've not, uh, not had a chance to speak to him. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a disappointing way for him to, in, to, to bow out after all his hard work and his feats and his exploits. And his great <coughs> victories. So yeah, it's be a, a little bit disappointing for him. <laughs> But uh, take nothing away from, uh, from Ronan, who played absolutely fantastically. And the referee here just cleaning the white at the behest of Ronan McCarthy. Neither player will take any chances in this match. Now is not the time to take time chances. Running. You've seen the trophy on offer. And, uh, the grand prize pot as well. But small change. <coughs> yeah, the 
is nice. These guys, they, they play for titles. We nearly got spit out there, didn't we? We had a couple of those last week, if you remember. These pockets are starting to get a bit sick and tired of being potted in, I think, after 21 weeks. We saw some absolutely bizarre acts of physics on this table last week. We were nearly guilty of one there. Or nearly victim to one, I should say. Yeah, last week, it, uh, we were defying the laws of gravity last week. what Einstein would have made out of uh, some of those uh, bounce outs and uh, Newton even. <laughs> Someone not taking I a history class in a while. never went to school uh, for my history lessons. Oh, now. Well, that's a very, very uncharacteristic error. Ooh, that face up. tells it all. Ronan Snookered doesn't want to hit the jaw of the pocket. That's the only place he didn't want to hit, obviously, other than the pocket itself. You can see it bounced the white back. You get to the hit, but these are now opened up for Liam Dunster. That's a really, really sloppy error from Ronan. You don't see many of them. No, it's definitely a collector's item. And, uh, I mean, he must have been fearing the worst after uh, going in off his break, but um, he'll be relieved to be back at the table. And even though that uh, yellow nearest the centre pocket probably doesn't go in the middle, he's got a nice easy plan up to the top pocket. So I think that's what he's going to be playing on next, just run this white through. left himself pretty perfect there just didn't, didn't want to be on the cushion so the fact that he's off the cushion means he can get the white ball off the cushion as well after he's played this plant just needs to decide what uh, what ball he wants to play after he's played the plant he has got a choice play the one over the bag, bring the white down the left hand side of the table for the one down the rail. Makes it look very, very easy. Totally routine clearance, but it looks so. You know, these balls down the rail are not easy, and uh, you know these guys make them look easy. But they've got to be cued, and you s it's not gone in. Wow! He's still waiting for somebody to open the door and have a bit of a breeze, but. Um, well, Ronan's not hanging around. We mentioned in his match against Jack, you very rarely get a chance with Ronan McCarthy. You have to take them when they come. Because he will punish you otherwise. That is a gift in the end. This is, as you mentioned when he was lining it up, Kev, it's not an easy pot. But take a look at how close he comes. He thought that oh, was going to fall thought about in. it, didn't it? Mm -hmm. thought about it. But it was an error, and Ronan stepped in, and he's taken the first frame against the serve, as it were. So, um, could that be the crucial blow? Time will tell. Yeah, I wonder if what Ronan's been up to, won the tour, won the Welsh Professional, won the British Open last year as well. And considering his general form, 
has been superb whenever we've seen him really in the Champions Cup. It's a surprisingly early exit in the World Championships and I'm expected to see him pick further than round two. We're going to have a re-rack the Blacks in. Yeah, we would, uh, we would expect Ronan would be uh, at, the, uh, at the bitter end. He seems to be at the final stage of virtually every event he plays in. But, um, yeah, that was a surprise, but um, you know, <laughs> nothing's a surprise these days. Um, <laughs> you know, everyone's capable of beating each other. You know, if you get a, a hot run, anything, possible. And by contrast, here is Liam's recent record. And I'll take a look there at his last results. 16, quarter-final, quarter-final, final, semi-final, quarter quarter semi last 16, last 16. Talk yeah. about getting to the end consistently of tournaments. Yeah, yes. again, he's, he's, he's definitely upped his game, and uh, on top of that, he won the World Series event in France as well. It's not on that uh, on that list, so um, that was his first professional event victory. So, yeah, certainly, uh, the last 12 months, Liam Dunster has, uh, has certainly come to the party. Well, Ronan's made a ball. But it's not a simple table, this, or at least it doesn't appear so. He's going for reds. There's another break happened. See, the other one went pretty much straight away, but mentioned earlier it's his Achilles heel. Maybe touch harsh there, Achilles heel, but it's it's the weakest point of a very, very, very strong all round game, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, it's all relative. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, if there is a few percent uh, deficiency he certainly makes up uh, in in every other area. The man just doesn't miss pots. It's a simple one. The, the one shot he missed against Jack Wheeler in the semi final was a really impressive plant to take on, and he only missed that because it stopped a little bit short. He got the line dead on. He is so efficient when it comes to just potting balls. And I think the main reason for that is. His keyboard control is about as good as it gets. He very rarely has to play a really, really impressive shot. Absolutely, yeah. His, his all-round game is, is top draw. You know, if it's safety, if it's, if it's attacking, uh, if it's all-out potting, you know, he's, um, he's up there in, in every department. Uh, I think what yeah, is absolutely commendable for Ron is that he, he's played at such a high level for such a long time. You know, he's, you know, he's not he's not 21 anymore, uh, but you know, he's still playing pool up there with the best in the world. And it's just so impressive to see. And, you know, he does have to travel a lot as well, coming from Ireland. And, uh, you know, all those factors aside, he still puts in great performances. Um, absolute credit to, uh, to him. He's a fantastic player. He really is. It's two zip then to Renan McCarthy. Liam Dunster's going to have to call upon some of his Champions Cup form to get himself back into this final he has been superb I think we're probably just about right in saying I mean, to stand out performance really in the competition have been these two they really have not let up in any of their matches there's been no no flat notes been great performances only yeah. and I think it's probably fair to say that Liam was the most fortunate of the big hitters with his last 16 draw uh, maybe escaped some of the big guns, but at the same time, the man had Mark Boyle in round two <laughs> just to get there. Yeah, uh, and, and Drew Hughes, who put in a fantastic performance at Chester to uh, beat Gareth Hibbert, I think. Neil Raybone. Was it Neil Raybone? It was. Yeah, and um, you know he was playing well, playing confident. So, you know, no easy matches. Um, just got to beat who's in front of you. And... Um, these two have done it uh, more than anybody else, and that's why they're in the final. <laughs> <laughs> the 
is that? ABC levels of punditry there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now then, Liam at the table, he's made a ball. A good break this time. His first break was awful. By anyone's standards, not just his high ones. But he's got a decent shout here. That's a clearance. Just call his extension. I think he's recognised the lay of the land here and he just wants to make sure this first shot's clean. <laughs> no distractions. And if you take a look at the reds here, <coughs> only one bit of work to be done, I think. Over to the left hand side of the table. <coughs> and red by the yellow. Might just need a little bit of developing. Is how he separates it, and it's just there. Great shot. We've come to expect nothing less. Yeah, just it to uh, perfection. And this really is what the doctor ordered for Liam. An uncharacteristic miss early on in this match. Now is a good, uh, good solid break and run out and uh, get right back into this match. But again, a careless, careless one there from Liam. Just when it looked like he was uh, getting back into it, he's probably missed more pots in his first couple of frames. And he has in the rest of the Champions Cup. <laughs> Run is just going to be delighted at getting all these chances. I think it's, uh, it's Christmas. This frame was huge. It's a massive difference between 2 1 and 3 0. You know what Ronan's like when he's 3 0 up. He can be runaway Ronan. Robotic Ronan, runaway Ronan. Okay, not seen runner seen up them Ronan. <laughs> You've seen them all. this one well yeah, it's pretty good so it's, it's obviously going to take the one into the middle and then he's going to take the one down the rail so that's going to end up in that pocket there and he's going to have to try and run the white down with a little bit of left hand side to leave himself a nice shot right into the into the middle. He could he, he has got another option shot. He could stun this one in and bring the white above the black to take the uh, yellow into the same pocket. But I think um, the easy shot is just to run it through with um, with left hand side. So what he favours. Yeah, he's favoured the more difficult shot and played it absolutely fantastically. Makes a shot like that look so straightforward. And that's why he's doing the best around. Simple black, three zip. Well, we've seen Ronan McCarthy in this position before. And Liam Dunster will be hoping he didn't become 
he doesn't become another statistic in the sense of the fate suffered by Stuart Wright, Lee Ray and John McAllister. It is a long way back from 3-0, but if anyone can come back from 3-0 in this scenario, he put Liam Dunster high on that list. The way he's been playing in this tournament, the way he's played tonight in knocking out Scott Gillespie. Yeah, he was 3-1 down in that match and then, uh, you know, found a gear and um, it was very impressive running out a 6-3 winner. I think uh, what he's going to be concerned about is those two missed pots which are completely out of character and um, yeah he needs to uh, he needs to regroup and uh, he needs to uh, cut out those mistakes and find a way back into this match which Ronan has um, offered him with a, another dry break well if Ronan had potted a ball on every break that he's had tonight I don't think he'd have lost a frame. He's had a lot of dry breaks. Only had three in the last match. And uh, he's had one in this match. There's only a second break, mind. Yep. table to look at and all he can do is put oh, I'm not sure if this yellow goes in this bottom right hand corner as we're looking it did go in I played it well so I think he can uh, Pop this one into the bottom right corner. I think that's his only pot. So he can, uh, can get on. It's, um, he's got a lot of work to do in this break. And he's running out of time. He's only got five seconds. Okay, I think he's going to have to take the one into the left corner, top left corner. Has he found the gap of gaps? I'm sure he has. He's thinking about it. He's not got an awful lot of time to make his choice. Not for make a no decision. Oh, didn't he play that really well? Yeah. Just played a little bit of right hand side on that shot just to flick, just to create a bit more angle. You can see there the side he put on. So, what that does is when the white hits the object ball, it just creates a bit more angle. Which meant he could make that pop. Great shot. Made it look easy. Where the whites end up as well, perfect on the one. I mean, it's a difficult ball, really, at the bottom of the table. It's a cluttered table, a congested table. But Liam Dunster <laughs> is cruising his way through it. Afford any more careless mistakes. He'll look to uh, bring the white up and take the yellow into the top left next. And we'll leave this one over the centre as his last ball. He could, you know, he could take that one first, just depends. Now he sees it, but I'm um, pretty certain he'll, he'll be going top left and right middle and black into the bottom left hand corner.
that's the roots. And William Dunstep should here get his first frame on the board. Just going to pinch a little bit of this pocket, screw the white back a few inches. Beautifully done from Liam. That'll be a bit of a nerve settler. He's had a difficult start to this final. Yeah, he did that. He did that. Big style to get back into this match. Those two missed pots on the left hand side in that column, they're the, uh, the big standout statistic of this final so far. Chances that uh, normally he would have taken and has taken in, in his previous matches. Uh, a bit of an uncharacteristically error strewn, hasn't it, from from Liam? A really bad foul from the break as well. Let's not forget. Absolutely. He's just taking his time to settle into this final. Winning that frame will do him the world of good now, and uh, he could be, uh, you know, Ron and needs to look at his break as well. He, he can't keep uh, coming up dry all the time because he's just going to keep giving Liam chances. Which he's not going to keep missing, that's for certain. He's still going to play up. So the next few frames could uh, could determine how this uh, how this final pans out. Is it going to be a run and streak to the to the winning line quite quickly, or is uh, yeah, going to get right back into this Time match running. and uh, take it down to the wire? It's Liam's break. And he could really use a good one. Needs this to be 3 2. 4 1 might be too far back, even for him. And um, that break will not help him. Really bad time to go dry there. And on this occasion, I think he's just a little bit unlucky. He got good movement. A couple of balls really threaten the pockets. He's not one of the hardest hitting breakers. By no means a bad one. No, it was a fair break. But, um, didn't really threaten the pockets. Just gives Ron another chance, and uh, if he can put this difficult one. He's missed it. Oh, wow. Well, Liam Dunster may well be thinking, where was my drop into that pocket? Looked pretty similar, didn't it? How has that gone in? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that is near identical to the same yellow that Liam Dunster played into that very pocket earlier on in this match. It cost him a frame. On such instances, what matches one and lost? There's a matter of moments here away from 4 1. been quite a few rapid frames rattled off by Ronan McCarthy. This is going to end up being another one. Just like that ball rattling in the jaws of the pocket. Well, I think he got a kick then. He definitely got a kick. Even the uh, arena boarding <laughs> fell down at the that shock. That was how hard that was. Kick. He's asked for the white to be cleaned. I don't think that's a big surprise. Well, a lot of times for that to happen. And the key positional shot. Time running. Of the frame. This now is difficult. It's not beyond the realms of Ronan, though. A 
what a recovery. To pot that after getting that kick really shows the measure of the man and the professionalism of the player. Ronan McCarthy leads 4-1 in the Champions Cup final. Can he get his hands on the trophy? We will find out. This final concludes next. The IPA Free Sports Champions Cup Pool is brought to you by Select Car Leasing. The IPA Free Sports Champions Cup Pool is brought to you by Select Car Leasing. Well, welcome back. 
And this is what you missed over the break. Liam Dunster rattled off a frame which was high quality and much needed for the Scots. And it moves back within range of Ronan McCarthy, who is still in command of this Champions Cup final. He leads by four frames to two. <coughs> but if he keeps breaking dry, which is what exactly what he did in the frame that we didn't just witness because it was a bad dry break to have because Liam could just waltz in and sweep up the reds. Ronan is going to struggle to get over the line if he keeps on breaking dry. Absolutely. And um, it's two out of uh, three breaks that he's, uh, he's been dry on. And, um, yeah, he's just... Um, if he keeps doing it, he's just going to keep presenting... Liam with uh, opportunities, which um, he's too good a player not to take. Well, this is Ronan's break from the last frame. You can see here, one of his you know, one of his better breaks in terms of movement, but no balls threatening the pocket there at all. Yeah, not only four or five balls past the centre bag, if that. So, uh, is that White going? Oh, I thought it was going to get a little push in. But Liam's having similar issues. And when you present a table like this to Ronan McCarthy, you do so in the knowledge that you may not get another shot. All the troubles that he's had on his break. Ronan hasn't missed a pot in this final yet. And he only missed a billiard shot in his semi. Yeah, I think um, looking at Liam's break, he very very similar every time the white is always threatening one of those corner bags and uh, he does run the risk of balls coming round to uh, to knock it in uh, as unlucky as that is so um, yeah, it's something for him to uh, him to uh, work on in the future it's uh, small things but um, Sometimes bigger difference between uh, winning tournaments and not. Well, he's asked for the keyboard to be cleaned and might be down about the tactics to that. He's got himself a little glance at the table as well. Uh, Luke Crocker, who's uh, still in at uh, the last minute. Runs played safe. Just takes the pocket. I'd say not entirely successful because obviously there's a pretty wide gap for the ball to go into, but obviously his primary concern was the red nearest to it, which is now blocked. Yeah, and using the benefit of his years of experience, he knew that um, he, even though he's uh, four two up, he didn't want to push the boat out too much. Um, there's there's a couple of tricky areas for both um, for both colours, so he just. Um, Biding his time, not, um, not pushing it uh, too much. I'm just waiting for a, a better opportunity. Which, um, well, he's looking to present it here. He's going straight after his bad ball, knocks it out. Yeah, after this shot. But the thing with playing that shot is he does hand Liam an opportunity. So he does, you can see that. The red goes. Under okay. the table, up to the top of the table. And even though he's got um, a tricky one, so obviously this this red here um, has got no obvious pocket. But what he can look to do is to maybe pot this one off the yellow at some point to uh, free up that bag. Make that red potable. So that's uh, a few shots ahead. <coughs> Well, he's used his extension, which is a pretty good indication that he wants to go for this. It was a slightly risky shot from Ronan, just in the sense that it did give Liam this chance. But, as we saw with Ronan's initial break, sometimes the better option is not to push the boat out. Liam will be hoping that's not the case here. I think that shot from Ronan was the first sign of any nerves or tension at all. Um, he, he wanted just to glance thin off that red and he, he's hit it, he just, he just jabbed at it a little bit 
And um, yeah, just uh, just a couple of signs there. If they left the white at the bottom of the table, which is what he was looking at. Um, left Liam and, he's, uh, Liam and he's the opening pot so um, yeah, interesting this match is far from over it's a good shot that from Liam got perfect cannon on the yellow to clear it and also got the nice cannon on the yellow at the table to free the black up yet further opportunity knocks for the Scotsman. ways he could play these but I suspect he'll take the two at the top of the table first and come down to this one on the right hand cushion and then leave the one near his way he's queuing up now to the last he's, he's, he's on the hit that one a little bit I think he can just um, Put this one into the top right as we're looking on screen. Uh, play with lots of uh, probably drag and a little bit of right hand side. Just I want to. Where's that white going? Mm, very close to the middle pocket. He certainly went for. Uh, pinpoint position there he pinched a bit on the bag on another day that could have dropped in the middle but um, he's okay oh, speaking of on another day okay, he's using all of the bag Say that again. That should be routine from here. It's been a topsy turvy final. And Dunstan, much in the same way, when he came back in the semi against Scott Gillespie. Grinding his way back into it, the black drops, and he's back within one. He's not going to let Rona McCarthy run away with this. And a reminder of what we've still got to come this year on Free Sports on the uh, cloth here in Solihull. The Free Sports Premier League 2018 kicks off in two weeks' time. And these are the names that will feature some truly world-class players. Still got to find out one of them, <laughs> haven't we, Kev? But can you give us any inkling? Any uh, clues? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no clues. <laughs> well, when can I'm not we sure I know myself, actually. <laughs> <laughs> when, when can we expect to find out the final, the final name in the lineup? Well, I think we can probably announce it after tonight's uh, conclusion. So yeah, uh, we can uh, exclusively announce that tonight. And, uh, we are really looking forward to it. Liam Dunster, of course, already qualified uh, through his uh, professional ranking for the Premier League. And yet again, just to move ourselves back to the action tonight, be remiss of us to focus too much on events in two weeks' time. Because in the here and now, Liam Dunster's got a chance to tie this up. He tried to develop the block off the shot, which he did. Just uh, slightly misjudged it. But yet 
That's another dry break for Roman McCarthy. It's becoming a real problem for him. It is. I mean, he was three out of five in the last match. He's three out of four in this match. I mean, uh, it's actually getting worse for him. And uh, the fact that he's 4-3 ahead um, with three dry breaks is um, just a um, testament just to how well he's playing. Well, can you imagine if we'd have had... I don't know, taking our two semi-finalists, Scotland and Jack, if you'd have had their break, for example, in this final. I'm not sure we'd have lost a frame. No. And uh, Liam's tried to play a safety there. And uh, he's just opened the door, really, for Ronan. And uh, not one of Liam's best. Well, we saw this in the last round, didn't we, when you mentioned it was maybe the first sign of nerves from Ronan when he played a bit of a questionable safety. Is that the same there for Liam, do you think? Potentially, he's right back in this match. And, uh, you know, the pressure can... Uh, can reverse. to go in. That's his first missed pot <coughs> of the final. Collector's item. Absolutely. Now if Liam can jam this in. He's just going to put this yellow. Oh, he's, he's under hit that one a little bit. He'll be disappointed with that I think. I think he wanted to put that yellow right on top of that red. Yeah. <coughs> really wanted to say to it jam it right in next to it and that's another couple of centimetres on that one and it really isn't a big difference it's not a big amount at all but would have made all the difference in the world to this frame yeah it would have meant that Ronan um, couldn't have potted it direct and would have needed to oh would have needed to play a combination shot to well, pot it that's two missed pots in a row That really is a collector's item. So now Liam's going to be looking at how he can play a skill shot. Ronan trying to G himself on. He wants this title. He knows he's so close, but yet still so much to do. I'm just wondering if Liam can screw back onto that. No. Well, he has to look at the skill shot. It's the only way he's clearing that red out. A couple of ways, obviously, he can do it. He can play it direct. I don't think it's going to be kind to him. Is he looking at it here? I think he is. He is. I think he thinks that uh, that yellow can, uh, at the side of the red can help him. Remember, yellow and red must go. It's a crucial shot, maybe the most important in the match yet. Beautifully played. Excellent shot, and you saw the, the, the yellow hit just got a little nudge off the yellow. It was next to the red just to help it in the bag. Great shot. For somebody who's got three balls over pockets, he still doesn't look totally happy. Yeah, but uh, he's going to have a tricky black. I'm just wondering if he thinks about he might want to have a good move in that. Yeah, he's he had is. a good move in it. Yeah, he could still have another good move in it if he wanted. He could um, play the one into the uh, the top left. Quite got the angle looking at that overhead. Made 
he'll just have to take his medicine. See from that angle, it looks like he could screw it to the black. Well, this is not going to be easy. Not going to be easy. He needs a good white. And even then, he's going to have a tough shot. But you don't become Champions Cup champion without playing crucial shots like these at pivotal times. Yeah, this is the difference between winning and losing sometimes. He's left himself some work to do here. Well, what a tough shot to have to play. It will either, it will either tie it or it may be the beginning of the end of the Dunster Challenge. I mentioned his skill shot was the most important in the match. This now has comfortably taken that crown. Extension cord. Extension cord. Quickly run and jumps out of his seat if he if he gets uh, if he gets to the table. If he gets to the table. What a shot! Oh, what a fantastic shot! Under that pressure, under that scrutiny, that is a big time pot from Liam Dunster. The first man to get four frames off Ronan McCarthy. We could well be heading the distance. It's all square at 4 4. And yet again, he's won three on the spin. He did this in the first, in the first match tonight. We should have expected nothing else. Yeah, he's making a habit of these comebacks and uh, an absolute nerves of steel playing that black. It's not as if he tried to roll it in dead weight. He, you know, he played it with a nice pace and um, yeah, he sent a message to Ron and there saying, you know, I'm here, I'm back, I'm playing confidently and uh, can run and respond. Not at the moment because it's going to be Liam's break. But, um, well, Liam hasn't had it all his own way on the breaks either. It's been a strange final in that regard. Both have struggled. Yeah, it's two out of four for being dry. And uh, he's just giving these balls a good look over, as he does. Scores level at four all. Liam gets to break. Time running. We'll see if this white ball in, ends up towards one of these corner pockets again. It seems to be uh, the trait with Liam's breaks. What he wants to do, of course, is bring that white up. Right down the middle of the table. Just like that. Oops. Oh, he's, got one. He's, got one. he's got one in. He did. And he's got a great chance. Yeah, these things look very really nice, don't they? I thought halfway through that break that he's got no chance, and you just see this yellow get kicked in. Didn't look too kind for him. And all it takes is just that little, little bit of luck. That turns a, a bad break instantly into a good one. Does. And, uh, he's, uh, he's got a heart rate. I think it's just probably going for notch or two. Yeah, I think it shows by the fact that he's not wanting to take any. Any messing from the shot clock. Doesn't want to hear that once he's playing any shots from now on. If he can avoid it. Well, he's got a tricky little plant if he wants to stay at this bottom end of the table. Which I think he will. Simple, didn't he? He will be, be absolutely delighted that uh, he's just landed on the cushion and just made this point even easier. Well, you often hear it, don't you, in sports, the importance of momentum. And at the minute, the momentum is all with Mr. Dunstep. If 
Murphy wins his fourth frame in a row here. We'll go one from home, one from the trophy. of pressure. And just um, moving out of his eye line there. Just, uh, nice, nice touch. That shows that these guys are, uh, you know, they want the title, but. Um, Still respectful of uh, their opponent. Typical of the players in the IPA, to this sort of behaviour. Here we go then. For 5 4. It's there. Was it ever in doubt? Liam Dunster was 4 1 down. He's now. Five, four, up. He's one away from winning the cup. He's, and, uh, we, talk, we talk about the momentum and uh, looking down and out in early part of this match. A couple of uncharacteristic errors. Oh, look and at how he's him sat. He's very highly sprung, is it fair to say? I don't think those chairs are uncomfortable. <laughs> He's uh, ready to pounce if he gets um, a chance from uh, Ronan's break. And he has been getting chances from Ronan's break. It has not been good in this final. It needs to be better. It has to be better. No mistakes from now. It has to be better from now. And he's changed the break and where's the white going? But again, not much energy in those balls. Well, this is a big chance. I think he's going to be going for reds. Comes up dry yet again. Move close with the red to the middle pocket. Right. <coughs> These do look quite inviting. But typically, as we always seem to see it towards the end of matches, which have been close, it is far from a gimme. And this is set up for him. Reds, doesn't it? I think it does. I think it does. Certainly not easy under this uh, under this pressure. But, uh, all he wants is a chance. Just uh, believe in his ability and all those years of practice. It all comes down to the next few minutes. Just sit and watch and hope. Game using every second of the shot clock. Could be no mistakes from here. And I'm assuming he can get to that middle red. Oh well. Can he? That looks 
mighty tight. Yeah, I think the red to the bottom of those three doesn't squeeze past the yellow to make a plan. I'm just wondering if the um, red just that stuck to that yellow in the centre of the table, if that goes in this bottom right the corner. Once again, you're talking about the finest possible margins. Yeah, because if it doesn't, it's sticking. So his hand's been forced, he's got to pull out something extravagant. Oh, oh what a shot that is. In the circumstances, that is hugely impressive from Liam Dunster. He's still got work to do. He keeps the break alive with a brilliant reverse double. to pop this one into the bottom right corner, maybe bring the white round with a couple of cushions. And try and somehow cannon into that red and yellow. This is real. Wow, that is a great shot. How about it? Shot clock ticking. Four balls away from winning the Champions Cup. And that's the shot that Liam Dunster pulls out. He's threaded that through the eye of a needle. That was, um, that was fantastic. It that was it. high tariff. And it was high quality. Yeah. Does this red that he just cannoned into go into this bottom left-hand corner? If it does, I think that's what he's playing now. And this could be the shot that gives him one hand on the title. Brought a few supporters down with him from Scotland. They are very much enjoying this. It was arrow straight into the heart of the pocket. It's been some run this from Liam Dunster. Remember, 4 1 down in this final. And now just two balls away. Winning the IPA Free Sports Champions Cup. Stalks the table. Definitely no mistakes from here. It. He's on the black. 21 weeks of pull have come down to just one shot for Scotland's Liam Dunster. He's done it. What a moment. What a break to finish it. The highest quality which perfectly sums up the standard of this tournament. That trophy is moments away from being lifted by Liam Dunster. Do stay with us. The presentations are next. The IPA Free Sports Champions Cup pool is brought to you by Select Car Leasing.
the IPA Free Sports Two, 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 mic test, one, two, mic test. The IPA Free Sports Champions Cup Pool is brought to you by Select Car Leasing. Well, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, a wonderful night of pool, nay, a wonderful competition of pool. It is time now to make our final presentations. Ladies and gentlemen, here in Solihull, give it up for your runner-up in the Free Sports Champions Cup, Ronan McCarthy. <laughs> Ronan, you were superb all the way through this tournament, joy to watch. What were your final thoughts on what was ultimately a really tough final for you? Um, I can't really complain. I played, played really well the whole way through it. It was 4-1 up in the final and I didn't really get another sniff. Liam was brilliant. It's, sometimes that happens. It's pool and when you're playing at this level, it's going to happen. But no, no complaints. I've enjoyed the competition. It's been fantastic. And I would just like to thank all the support and all at home. It's been brilliant. So. No, I've enjoyed it, and fair play to Liam, he was absolutely brilliant there from 4-1 down, so you've got to just take your hat off to him. Well, I think you've said it all. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for our runner-up, Brandon McCarthy. 
And now the one man left standing at the end of 21 weeks and 64 players. Your winner of the IPA Free Sports Champions Cup, Liam Dunster. <laughs> Liam, it's been some journey for you. You, you've played, you've even commentated on this competition. I know it's a, a tournament you've really loved being a part of. How does it feel to win it? Yeah, absolutely over the moon. I uh, loved every minute of it, to be honest. Good not wait um, for the first, I think it was the first 14, 15 weeks it took for me to finally get a game in it. And then when I did finally get the game, I was, I was wanting more of it. So happy, happy to finally win it. And you didn't do it the easy way. Came back from big deficits in both the semi and the final. You're a player who never gives up. Is that a trait that you really enjoy having when it comes to games like that? Yeah, of course. Um, even though I'm far behind, I know that I can do exactly what I've done there and, and rattle off quite a few frames in a row without um, getting a chance. Um, I mean, that's exactly what I've done. Four one down, never gave up, and then I don't think he got much of a shot after that. And I know you've brought a bit of support with you down from Scotland as well. It, it's been a well-supported competition, and I'm sure you'd just have a few words for them as well. Yeah, thanks for the support, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Get your shades on. <laughs> well, that is just about it for this, but of course... We have a very important presentation, the wonderful Free Sports Champions Cup trophy. Uh, Kev Barton, the RPA president, and James O'Malley from Select Car Leasing, if you'd like to bring the trophy forward and present it to our winner, ladies and gentlemen, Liam Dunster. It's been a wonderful time of it on Free Sports. We hope you've enjoyed this competition. We've loved being here in Solihull with you. And if you've watched it at home, we can't wait to join you in a couple of weeks when the Premier League resumes from the Champions Cup, though, and from our winner, Liam Dunster. Very good night. The IPA Free Sports Champions Cup Pool is brought to you by Select Car Leasing.